Good day. Welcome to King Williams Everything. Today we're going to look at an MBX 1200Z. If you wonder what an MBX 1200Z is, this is a hardware floating point floating point math processor, 32-bit fast RAM, and real-time clock for the Amiga 1200 personal computer. Amiga 1200. So it gives you an idea of the vintage of this. And it's from Microbiotics Inc. And made in beautiful Richardson, Texas, United States of America. Good job, guys. And here's the indication. 2 megabyte 8881. That's the floating FPU unit. If you can't remember, the Amigas didn't have a math coprocessor. This lets you add one. That's why I bought this originally. I bought this new. And then we're going to look at the, I think the receipt's probably in here because I saved everything. Uh, but the unit's not in here. It's in the, it's in the Amiga. Aha. Uh -huh. We got some foams. Oops, here we go. Let's see, that right there. Let's look at the manual. And you can see it's MBX1200Z, user's guide. Uh, starting installation. And basically you slide it in the Amiga expansion slot and put in memory, it tells you how to put memory in. And also, here's the best part. This is why I bought the math coprocessor. Because I was doing some ray tracing, things like that. Which was really cool, and the math core processor uh, doubled the uh, uh, calculation, so it went from a slow pokey to fast. And you can see synchronously clocked 14.3 megahertz 881 is standard. Optionally, the board may be uh, supplied with 25 or 50 megahertz 8882. I don't remember which one this was, and the real time clock because the Mega did not come with a real time clock. That was an option. And in the back, you can see here's the, the layout of the board. They give you telling you what everything does. Math chip, some jumpers. I think you can change it for 8 meg. Uh, the SIM socket, nice and simple. And included software. I don't remember if you had to use the software or not. I didn't see software in here. I don't think you had to use software. I think you just plugged it in and it was okay. I think you had to use software if you wanted to make it uh, the 8 megabytes or something. But that's that. And let's see, we got other things. What's this? This is a invoice and this is a invoice. And you see I bought it from Memory World Inc. Bristol Pike Plaza Suite 213. Ben Salem, Pennsylvania. There it is, two megabyte with oh, uh, twenty megahertz floating point unit. So if we look at the manual, I think it said options were twenty five, uh, twenty five fifty. This one was actually a 20, 20 megahertz floating point floating floating point unit. So that was kind of nice. Okay, here's the invoice. All right. Uh, the date is 8-17-1993, and let's see, you can kind of see here, ship date, 8-17-1993, uh, MB-1200Z with clock and 20 megahertz floating point unit with 2 megabyte of RAM, and it was $200, so you remember, memory was very expensive. And two megabyte, and then the floating point unit on the card. So that was a pretty good deal at the time. Luther, you know, the Commodore sold uh, memory units, but I don't think the memory clock unit, but I don't think they sold a floating point unit. And that's why I bought this. But yeah, I also like the extra memory. So that's that. So now, you're probably saying, well, where's the unit? Where's the unit? Hang on, I got it. Let's go over here. Let's move Skycam. There's Skycam. Tweak Skycam up a little bit. See my Amiga 1200 topless. Pardon the toplessness, but I've been working on this. You can see this guy is minty fresh. This literally has been in the box probably since I'm going to say 95. So this has not seen light in all these years. But we're going to get a top view of this because I don't want to pull it out. 
Let's see, can I get the keyboard off here? I guess we're gonna have to pull it out. So let's move Mr. Keyboard out of the way, gently. And here's the unit, at least the top of the unit, the bottom of the unit. And this has the little trap door, so that's where this guy sits. You can see he's on his edge connector. Right, let's see if we can get him off. It's probably not gonna be that easy. There we go. And here's the card. Look at that guy. So here's the memory. Two megabyte of memory. A little battery for the uh, clock. That's the clock. Is it the clock? No, that's not the clock. That is the WX 1200Z. Oh, you know what? This is a 25 megahertz uh, floating point unit because if you look up here, it's just kind of hard to see. It says tw the crystal says 25 megahertz, and this says 25, so this is actually 25. So I think the invoice is wrong. The battery has died. I'm going to put a new uh, a C30, let's see, 2032 battery on there. But you got your memory, your floating point unit, and that's what you're paying for this guy. So that's all that is, and there's Mr. Edge Connector, because remember the Amiga had uh, just the Edge Connector, and this was the uh, the socket for it, it was on the board, so you kind of see that. And that's all that is, and that gave you the extra memory, and it actually did make a boost. Even on the 1200, you got, I think it was 2 meg of RAM, and this added an additional 2 meg of fast RAM, and so it actually made your Amiga quite a bit faster just by adding extra memory. And the floating point unit, you really, most of the things didn't really use it uh, unless it was specifically designed for it. So like ray tracing, some other things like that. That's where this, the floating point unit was kind of nice to have that. Uh, but for the most part, it, it really didn't do a whole lot. Uh, the memory is where you got the most bang for the buck. And the clock is a nice thing to have too. So it's kind of useless to have a computer, especially now you think, oh, a computer without a clock. Well, you know, you, you wanted a clock. At least I did. And, and most people, when they bought on a, a, even a 500, they bought the expansion, the 512 mega RAM, or the one meg uh, slot, and that's what they did. I'm not sure how many people did it on the 1200. I did because, like I said, I wanted this, and this was 200 big ones. That's like I said, that is the MBX 1200Z. So yes, if you can find one of these on eBay, you can still upgrade your Mega 1200. So that's what we had for today. Have a great day. Hey, I forgot something. There's some other things in this box. There's some advertisement. There's an advertisement for, let's zoom, magically zoom out. An advertisement for image processing command, common ground, uh, art department professional, ASDG incorporated. And this is a now includes complete AGA toaster, frame store, and anim support. And if you look in the back, art department professional, it's art department professional AD Pro provides many key benefits to users working with pictures and read, write, and convert between most common image files. And so they had advertisements in there that somebody put in there. And this one is Morph Plus. Morph Plus, apparently. Let you do like the Michael Jackson thing. Take your owl and make it into a baby. And this was Morph Plus by, let's see, what's he by? ASDG Company, again. And you look at uh, stuff like this and you know how hard to, you know, this was this was magic when you, if you, you could do stuff like this and now you look at it, it's, it's so simple, you know, you can easily, you can even open source free, free software and uh, morph things. But, you know, back in the day, it was, you know, you had to process the crap out of that. And that's where, you know, the floating point, you know, this kind of thing, process that to that, that took some computing power. And every minute counted, so probably like this guy too. But it's kind of neat, I did not notice these were in the, um, in the box. But anyway, that was a bonus, no charge.